Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, trying to see real quick before we get going here to make sure that we are online there, and uh, oh wow, yeah, you guys are, are there, I guess you can see yourself in the background already, uh, got, we see we got no, uh, no sound here, want to make sure before we get started here, my son's so faithful helping us, okay, yay, all right, we got sound, all right, jeez, guys. You guys are faithful. God bless you and thank you. And, uh, and really, I got to thank my son. He, he's really been a blessing to me uh, in helping us get this up and going. Uh, so I, I'm really thankful for him and being a big part of this uh, for us to get us here live on, on uh, YouTube on our live broadcast here. Uh, let's get right into the to the broadcast now. It is very serious. And of course, trying to make sure that we get this to where it'll fall into place uh, those of you that are commenting, if you can uh, let Ethan know, he's actually in the monitoring room right now, let him know if you were able to find our broadcast from yesterday, because it doesn't pop up in the right order for us. We think we fixed that problem, but we're still trying to figure that out. So we're hoping that today's broadcast will pop up in our uh, list of videos as the latest video out there, because this also helps us on cutting down on time of editing uh, all the footage that we have to edit through our processing pr program here. So this is what we're trying to do. Uh, all right, let's get right into it there. Seriously, North Korea accepts the offer of talks on January the 9th in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, that's Tuesday, I believe, next week. And President Trump has already been taking uh, credit for the over, uh, the over, what would you say, all, all the, uh, the, the pressure that he's put on North Korea with all the war games that he's done on his border there and the sanctions, et cetera, as to being that is what has contributed to North Korea coming to the bargaining table. But China has a different opinion altogether about this. They don't believe that uh, the United States has helped at all. In fact, if anything, they believe it has hindered uh, this process. And at the same token, it's still a great sign to see North Korea go to the tables and actually willing to sit down and have a talk. Regardless of what has caused them to go to that bargaining table, uh, who knows what it is. Is it because President Trump has been very tough? Well, maybe so, but there also may be a biblical implication that goes on with this. I, I want to share with you, though, some very troubling things, though, that have been coming around this whole issue that is built up to Kim Jong-un willing to go to the negotiating table. Uh, that may be having a lot to do with biblical prophecy. This article right here, Chinese President Xi Jinping orders army to prepare for war in chilling footage right here. This was just came out, uh, and I want you to be able to see a little bit of the, uh, this, this particular footage here where the president, uh, Xi Jinping, is addressing, as you can see on the screen here, a massive uh, Chinese military. And he says here, the military level should strengthen military training and war preparedness. Unswervingly place military training at a strategic position. And effectively implement military training at its central task. The leading roles of the upper levels to continue and to implement actual and joint trainings under combat conditions. All right, now, to sum it up in short, as it's been reported by several media outlets here. Hey guys, uh, I'm Sarah Bender, and I'm that, here guys. with Wayfair to show you guys how to make this awesome indoor hanging herb garden. So the first thing you want to do is to find a hanging fruit basket. I found this copper one at Wayfair.com. It's super cute and trendy. All of the, uh, Add a coconut foyer of fiber. And basically this is going to hold the swirling the while still allowing the drainage. I'm using the daily, low light uh, varieties such as cilantro, we have basil, as well as mint. We'll all do really good with indirect light. How easy was that? If you like the look, check out Wayfair.com to get your own hanging basket. And the fact is that China has been moving its military towards the border of North Korea, even uh, with the wake of the latest news of Kim Jong-un speaking about having talks in Seoul, South Korea. Newsweek brings out this here. China says U.S. will, will risk war with North Korea before talking to Kim Jong-un. Uh, another article that's just very troubling. Uh, this article right here, China uh, dispatches nuclear envoy to Seoul for North Korean talks. Uh, that came out just a couple of days ago. This is on Breitbart News. But 
remember when we shared with you just the other day, and I don't know if I have it, maybe I do have it. No, I don't have that particular uh, page up. I shared with you the other day the military movement of China moving its military, uh, including what was believed to be uh, some of uh, China's big uh, military hardware going up the northern border of uh, North Korea. And as we pointed out, we believe that this was a posture that could be to protect North Korea rather than going against North Korea. Well, come to find out, Russia did an article in their own language as well that brings up that exact same issue. Possibly and Russia could have does say this. that they Some believe that China was moving the their military Oklahoma there Thunder, to protect North Korea into from the military from intervention there. When the plane experienced some turbulence followed by an abrupt drop. But we're going to pause, guys. We're going to start this all over again. Give me one second. concern about the cabin pressure. The flight went on without incident, landing in Chicago shortly after 1 a.m. Shalom, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And guys, this is probably going to be the most comical. It, it's, it's already doing it again. One minute, guys. One minute. Uh, it, it never fails. They, they play the video, whether you want to hear the video or not. I have no idea why that happens. Anyway. We're learning a lot, <laughs> learning a lot trying to go live here. Uh, I do run into these problems when I'm actually recording as well, but normally I can just go down, hit the mute button on the computer, and then nobody hears it. And in fact, I think I can get away with doing that now because we do have, um, we have the desktop microphone turned off. At any rate, here we are, take three of the live broadcast uh, going all over the world and uh, wanting to share with you what's going on. And, and this is really a very serious message tonight that I want to share with you. So I, I really, hopefully we can get this brought out this time here without any uh, more technical difficulties here. Uh, and I thank God again, like I said, my son's there. He's helping me monitor this, helping us work through these problems uh, so that we can bring this out to you guys all in the future and be more better prepared. Let's go back to this. So in, in fact, while we were off here just for a moment, I did take the time to pull up the article I wanted to bring out just a moment ago. So I have that ready as well. Again, North Korea has is, is accepting the offer of talks on January the 9th in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, so Kim Jong-un has agreed to talk. Oddly enough, they're wanting to talk about the Winter Olympics. That's a little bit odd, don't you think? Uh, but as well, dealing with the situation of what's going on with the tensions between the United States and North Korea. And sometimes they want to throw Seoul South, Seoul, South Korea in the mix of this as well. But, you know, it is President Moon that has been trying very diligently to stop the hostilities and to bring about some type of peaceful resolution as well. So you can tell that South Korea has not really been willingly wanting to be the, the, the middleman or the puppet uh, caught between North Korea and the United States. And I know that it may not seem like it is, but it really is. Uh, Seoul has had not a whole lot of choice, but practice these military drills, uh, keep North Korea more on edge uh, as the tensions have been rising there on uh, this little tiny uh, uh continent here, our little tiny uh, country here with North Korea, with the two of them at a standoff. You know, it's been 70 years they've been at, technically at war anyway. Uh, and, and of course, in the past, it was China and Russia siding with North Korea, uh, with the United States supporting South Korea. Now, as we come to the situation now where Kim Jong-un is willing to come to the table to do the talks, there's still a lot going on in the background that suggests that these talks may not work. After all, I want to kind of share with you some of that information here. This right here also, Chinese President Xi Jinping orders army to prepare for war in a, in a chilling footage. Now, we've already lost the footage. We played that just for you just a moment ago there before we got cut off on this broadcast here where you were able to see where President Xi Jinping is talking about uh, this very situation about a possibility of war. It says here, as the camera pans through the crowd, it gives an insight into how the regimented, the world's largest army is. Speaking in front of thousands of troops and over 300 perfectly organized military vehicles, she, the Communist Party's general secretary, ordered his forces to prepare for the event of war. Now, this is all going on at the same time 
that we find out that Kim Jong-un is willing to prepare in talks. Some, as I had thought, perhaps that China maybe is going to actually go in and actually try to take down North Korea. Uh, but as I stated as well, I've never believed that that was the case. I've always believed that China would try to, to protect North Korea from the United States. Well, it just so happens to be that I think that's the sentiment of Russia as well. The article you see right here, this, this here from Mark Dell on, uh, on Twitter, this is from an actual news site. They're quoting, if you notice this picture here, I did this picture the other day for you guys. I want to blow it up a little bit bigger here on the screen there. This was showing that military convoy that we were speaking about just a couple of days ago, uh, headed towards the northern province of China on the north border of uh, North Korea there, right there where the two that come together. We showed you the map the other day where this was happening. And my own thought was, because they mentioned in here that it was like the S-300 system was also part of the military equipment that was being moved north there, was that could it be that China is actually going to take and try to confront North Korea and disarm it? Or as we thought all along, is it really that China is going to be there to protect North Korea if the United States launches a preemptive strike on North Korea? which uh, China seems to have uh, indicated in times past. We know that he put the uh, the Air Force on full high alert. Uh, that is, President Xi Jinping has done that in the past. Well, <clears throat> in this particular Russian article, if you actually go to the Russian page here, and I'll put a link for you in the description once the video actually uploads, Russian uh, media is saying the exact same thing. They believe that China has moved in all the military hardware, and they also, Russia mentions that tanks have also been moved into the region up there, that China is preparing to protect North Korea from a strike by the United States. All right, now, looking at some other articles here, China says U.S. will risk war with North Korea before talking to Kim Jong-un. Uh, that comes out in uh, the Newsweek right here. Uh, one thing it says here, it says, uh, China tells Trump, this is not how a U.S. president should behave after North Korea tweet there. Pyongyang has taken the initiative to improve relations with Seoul this time. Obviously, it wants to break the heavy sanctions. If South Korean Korea can enhance ties with North Korea, why can't the U.S. and other countries? If they can start communications through sports, will they realize more interactions later in economics and politics? The Global Times wrote in the latest editorial. Well, that's a very good point, all right? Now, also, look at this article here as well. China dispatches nuclear envoy to Seoul for North Korean talks. So China is really becoming a, a big player in trying to calm the situation going on uh, between, some would say South Korea and North Korea, but it's really the, between the United States and North Korea, and trying to do everything that they possibly can to calm the situation in the region. But then again, we have also like this article here that appeared on the express.co.uk where we have the title says, World War III, China and Russia prepared to shoot down US missiles in North Korea standoff. That's an old article. It comes out, it came out back in November. But the problem is it's not changed since then. Nothing has changed since then. And so I began to reevaluate the biblical prophecies on this, this subject matter, which, if I, which I have shared with you guys so many times in time past. When we read out here, but tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affrighten him. All right. Now, the affrighten him is the king of the north, Melchizedek, that we find out that's written all up here through Daniel chapter 11. But it's the verbiage that's used here in Hebrew here. We put the word but tidings, but u shamot is literally hears in the plural and, and hears, or another way to translate this, because it's like you've heard something, or a rumor is another way to translate that as well. A rumor, all right, from the east and from the north. U metzephon. But the, 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 the part about the frightens him is right here. This, the, the Hebrew language is, is worded a little bit different than what we have in, in English. So when we have on their tidings, literally we should translate it, is hearings or sayings or rumors out of the east and out of the north shall frighten him, the king of the north. All right? East and the north, that's China and Russia. And he shall go forth with great gadola great fury to destroy, not only to, to, to make away many. 
Now, I don't believe for a moment that President uh, Donald Trump is the king of the north. It is that hidden king. And as we brought out recently, I think it's from Jeremiah's prophecy, Jeremiah identifies the Roman Empire as the northern kingdom. And so it's very good possibility, since Rome seems to be the one that kind of runs the NATO military machine, that that's the one that it really troubles the most. And it, again, it's the rumor. It's the hearings. It's like you hear something. It's a rumor. You don't really, you can't really say for sure. But if you look it up, you'll even see. I forget if you, maybe if you use uh, Strong's or something, maybe it shows you in there that this can also be translated as rumors. Now, think about it then. I want you to think just for a moment. Remember the words of Yeshua. All right. We have Yeshua in Matthew 24. What did he say here? Let me back up to verse 5 real quick. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I think it's very fitting when I think of this, because I think of the king of the north, and it's more of a religious leader, which we have identified before in Daniel. Uh, we find that out when it comes to the British Empire. They, they, they unite with a foreign god. All right, that's Daniel 11, I think, verse 39. The foreign god was Rome. They united with Rome in World War I. All right, so he says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. The succession of popes, who knows? Right? And you shall what? You shall hear of wars and what? Rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. It's almost, and I'm just saying, friend, as a conjecture. I don't say that this is what this is applying to at the very given moment. But as I'm looking what's going on with North Korea, how that Russia and China are very heavily involved over what's going to happen with North Korea. And then I look at how the scripture in Daniel says that tidings out of the east out of the north or rumors out of the east and the north frighten him or cause him anxiety. Another way you can translate the word there, it causes great anxiety and causes him to go away to, 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 to just literally destroy many. All right? Could it be that Yeshua was warning of that very thing here when he says, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled. In other words, if we were to say to President Trump, you know, I know he's got his religious advisors, President Trump, Yeshua told you when this event comes around, don't be troubled by it. It's not going to be a big deal. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be uh, famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All right? Could this actually be the prophecy that we're looking at right here? Could the very situation happening over there in North Korea, could it get out of control? And why would there be that rumor to begin with? Well, look at what China's doing now. Look what Xi Jinping did. Even though North Korea is coming to the table to talk and President Trump is excited about that, here the president here is telling his people to get ready for war. We had a general say the other day uh, over in Norway to the Marines, be prepared for a big AWS war as from what they quoted it in the newspaper there. All right? I don't believe in using that kind of language, but my point is, can you believe that all these Threats of wars, rumors of wars could ignite all over a rumor. Is that what could, be? I don't know, friends, I'm, but I'm concerned and I'm alarmed by what I'm seeing here. All right. And I'm thinking that perhaps that this, this could be the very issue that could ignite the war right there. Because certainly, and if you look, let's go back over here to Daniel just for a moment there. Back up just a little bit and look at what all happens here. All right, verse 40, for example. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. All right, that doesn't say that in Hebrew. All right, it says at the time of the end, that's true, the king of the south, all right, will push not at him, emo, emo, I mem vav. That's with him, with who? That's the king of the Negev, the king of the Negev desert, an Israeli leader, pushes with what? The Melakatsifon, and he and and he pushes with him, and he goes over him. Aliyah, Aliyah is over him like a storm. 
So this king of the north or this huge NATO military literally goes over Israel and fights the battles throughout the entire Middle East because we actually find out it's Barat Salt, the lands. It has nothing to do with Eretz, the, the land of Israel. It's in the plural, Barat Salt, Uba Barat Salt. All right, so he goes over Israel and he fights these huge battles all through the Middle East and he goes over in like a storm with what? With chariots, all right? Barakavit, chariots and, and, and with the horsemen, etc. And I've showed you those pictures of the big C-130 C cargo planes and they drop out the Humvees out the back of it and they drop out the men and everything else. So we've already been seeing that the king of the south, the king of the north have been working together to conquer the Middle East as it is. Now, this is a shame when it comes to Israeli leadership, because God commanded Moses when we went into the land, according to Deuteronomy, don't war against Ammon. Don't war against Esau down near Mount Seir, which is part of modern day Syria. He said, I've given them this land. I mean, there are cousins, Ammon, Palestinians included. And I realize Palestinians are being incited against the Israelis, and of course, there are those inciting against the Palestinians. But you know, at the core of it, the people really want to get along. Because why? The, geez, I, I could get on a whole different toot altogether on this, and I really I shouldn't do it. But, but he, he shall enter also into the beauteous land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall be delivered out of his hand. Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. That's only out of NATO's hand. Because Why? Remember, he comes up strong with the small people. He's using them against the people of Israel. It's really, it's a whole complicated matter. And really, maybe we should take time to go into all this all over again. But when we get down to verse 44, after we're seeing all these wars going on in the Middle East, then this sudden thing comes up. And we've already seen, we've seen Iraq, we've seen Syria, uh, you've got, you've got uh, Egypt, you know, was totally destabilized, uh, northern countries there in Africa, uh, all these destabilization, as General Wesley Clark said, that would happen, right? Now, suddenly, something out of the east, now the north, brings him a great alarm, and that's China and Russia. And it seems that North Korea is what's causing China and Russia to get in the mix. So this is when it's all going to really, really come down to a very bad situation. All right, let's move along here because we're running out of time here and I really want to finish up with you guys. This was the other thing too I wanted to show with you real quick though. Russia very much involved. December the 23rd, a day, two days before Christmas Day was published here, World War III preparation, Russia moves huge missile defense onto North Korean border. That's not the first time they've done that either. We reported this almost a year ago. Russia has moved uh, the gnarly defense system into North Korean border as World War III fears reach a boiling point on the North Korean peninsula. Again, one reason why we say that tensions are ratcheted up. You have the S-400 missile defense system here. That system is absolutely no good against Kim Jong-un being sitting on his border. All right, watch what they noted in here. Russia has reacted to North Korea's increased nuclear and ballistic missile testing and has moved to the border. Vladimir Putin has sent missile attack defenses to the border with North Korea. President Trump reached out to the Kremlin to do more to help to put a stop to Kim Jong-un's nuclear program, but Russia accused uh, the U.S. of antagonizing the rogue state. In the footage, the huge system can be seen being unveiled on the border with North Korea. What's Russia doing? They're coming there to protect Kim Jong-un. That's what they're doing. Same thing with China. All right, so do you see why the, the, the rumors could cause him to go and make away many? Very troubling. Now, turning our focus to Syria real quick here as we close out, friends, and everything. Uh, the new Arab, and you guys are, I'm sure, already aware of this. Uh, we had a, an attack on the Russian military base inside of Syria, their Air Force base that they have there. Now, the first... Uh, Claims that were coming out is that Russia had seven aircraft destroyed as a result of the rebel forces getting near to their military base. Russia does admit the two soldiers were killed in the Syrian air base attack. Uh, they also say that, yes, they had one plane, uh, the, uh, one jet that was actually damaged. That's the, the picture you see here. One of their Su-24 bombers uh, was hit by uh, the, the, the rockets that were coming in. Uh, it says that... Uh, uh, also, we have on here, the Russian MOD refutes media reports destruction of seven military aircraft at the Himimim Air Base. 
Uh, they, they say that, that did not happen. But here's what was really interesting. Now, they say that two Russian soldiers were killed. They admit that there. But then we get this particular report coming out. It's in uh, the Russian news media right here. But this is the picture of what you're seeing here on your screen. This is Russia's air hospital. Russia sent that in, and it was seen flying over Latvia, which is not too far from the Himimi uh, air base there that Russia has. So were they uh, evacuating more Russian soldiers that had been uh, wounded in this and being treated as they're being flown back uh, possibly to somewhere in main, uh, the main part of Russia or not? I can't say, but it is, uh, as, they, as it is called by the Russian media, it is their air hospital. They actually have a hospital that they fly through the air and can treat their wounded there. Uh, also, uh, and one other thing I thought was kind of interesting, to just throw this up here for the news tonight. Gone in 30 seconds, homeless man in Paris airport takes 490000 over a half million dollars in money because somebody left the door open there uh, and unlocked and, and all the money vanishes. Thus far, they've not been able to catch the man. Uh, he left. Uh, he is from African. Uh, uh, he's African descent. They said he could already be back in Africa by now, uh, but that's a lot of money. I don't think he's going to get out of the nation that easily with that kind of money. Uh, anyway, uh, well, friends, I, yeah, we're still live on here. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for bearing with us. Uh, we do hope that this actually loads up with no problem. So uh, I'm trusting that we'll, we won't have to be doing editing as much as what we used to do in the past there to where we can be a true blessing to you guys as well. And I want to thank my son again for helping us with this and also for monitoring uh, the, the communication comments that you guys share with us there. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and God bless you.